Hiya guys and welcome back to Aids Workshop. So it seems I've been putting videos up uh, fortnightly lately. Um, it's just one of those things, you know. Oh, little fly. Go away. <laughs> little fly in the way. Okay, shall we try that again? Yes, fortnightly I've been putting them up lately. It's just life getting in the way, all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm keen to get on with this engine. We're getting so close with it now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a couple of little systems, fuel system, ignition system, and we're done. And uh, let's hope that one of these fine days we get to a point where it can be tried out. And I'll try and do that first start live after I've proved, first of all, we've got spark, first of all, we've got fuel, and if we've got those two, I know we've got compression. I've got to do a little bit of work lapping the valves. I haven't done that yet, but what I'm going to do today and it's all in here, this stuff. I've been looking, thinking about carb designs, doing little sketches and what have you for a while. I want to have a carb with a butterfly, first of all. Well, it won't be a butterfly, it'll be more of a ball valve as a throttle. I want to be able to meter the fuel, so I want a variable jet, something I can adjust to get the mixture right. And I also want to put a choke on it as well. So uh, I'm going to... It's in my head what I need to make, so I'm going to block up a piece of aluminium, bring you along with the journey. So enjoy, guys. Cheers now. So, block of aluminium for the carburetor. We've got to start somewhere, so let's start with the body. Um, last side, all blocked up. Six sides, true and square to each other. Well, it would be if I had cleaned up. Uh, let's just run it back across. Here we are. So, uh, deburr this now and decide on a dimension from the edge of the block where we are going to have the throat of the carb in relation to the block. I think I need to make a decision on that to start with. So I'm going to offer this block up to the um, valve case, valve block assembly and just get a rough idea of where I want it and then I'll mark and maybe centre drill a tiny hole in the end of here just ready so that I've got a datum then we can go to the four jaw and I'll explain as we go along so I've just measured approximate and the inlet port is I'm gonna call it 15 mil up from the base so if this carburetor obviously there's a lot of meat to come off this yet but that's the base blocked up version um, if I put the hole 15 mil up from one face so centre about 15 mil up from one face. That's going to be the area where the, uh, where is it, 15 mil. That's going to be the area about 15 mil up where the throat of the carb is going to be to line up with the hole in the carb. Now there will be a turned a little spigot on here eventually, turned back here, um, that's going to pop into the hole in the uh, in the manifold. So uh, the two will squish into line as it were. Uh, at some point and I may even around the outside of the spigot put an o-ring groove so that when it pushes in we get a good seal there um, it's that would probably be a good idea um, and even though this is going to push into the manifold block I'm going to have a separate form of support for the carburetor so it'll be located off the base plate and pushed in um, to keep against that o-ring which is going to be on the little spigot that sticks out of there or the little upstand the little circular upstand when this is turned away but so the first thing I want to do is make um, a date and point in the right place so I'll do that in the mill and that'll give me something to clock to when I put it in the four jaw so I clocked it in the centre, picked up on one end, that's too slow, and I'm just going to put a centre drill hole, and that is going to be the position within the block. Where the throat of the carb is going to sit. Now there's going to be all sorts of profiles in this throat. But as a starting bid, I'm going to go for a throttle body diameter, or throttle hole. The smallest hole is going to be, I believe, 3 sixteenths. I'm going to go for about 180, 187, by whatever it is. Um, so it's going to be about 3 sixteenths. Um, I'm undecided, but I'm going to put a small reamed hole right down through this. Basically, when it's in the lathe, 
and I've turned the spigot on the end of here. Now this is the outlet, or the trumpet end, we'll call it, even though it's not going to be a trumpet shape. Or it may be, who knows, but uh, yeah, so I think around 3 sixteenths would be as big as I would go. It's clocked up in the port jaw, and I'm just skimming it back over a length of 8 mil. I think I'll go for something like, I don't know, 10 mil diameter. I can always reduce it later. But that gives me a, something to hold on in a collet to reference other dimensions from the other end. So I'm just skimming back to 10 point, uh, 7 point 9 to start with. I'll stop this in a sec so you can see it. Okay, let's just stop that chuck. So as you can see, I'm gradually turning it down. Obviously, it's all offset. It's in the four jaw, offset and clocked up, true to the uh, true to the centre drill hole. So I'm going to take this to diameter. Yeah, let's say 10 mil. Almost cleaned up now. It. We've got a full diameter now. Let's speed it up a bit now. Use a bit of WD on it, I think, in a second. Stop that tip welding up. Okay, so at least we've got a true diameter now. It stopped all that intermittent cutting. Um, I will need to face this. Uh, where are we? Let's just grab a calipers. Get myself in the ballpark before we start. Uh, should be about 12, 13, 14.2. Okay. Speed that up a bit. Let's get a bit of WD40 in the play. Okay. Everything's shaking a bit here because I'm uh, I've got an offset weight going on. I better slow down the touch. Okay, that steadied it out a bit. When we're running at 700 RPM, I'd like to be running a lot faster than that, but. You could probably see everything shaking because of the imbalance of the uh, weight in the chuck and the jaws being offset, everything like that. Take at least another mill off this. So, plain turning, guys. Uh, I'm aiming for 10 mil. Bring you back when we're there. Okay, that's 10 mil on the button. All faced off square, 
uh, happy to go. So that's basically that outer side of that one end done. Now, question to myself, do I put a 316th reamer through it now? Or do I go undersize? You know what, I'm going to put a 316th reamer through there now. So, uh, change over to a drill chuck here um, and drill and reamer hole. You've seen it all before, guys. So, slight change of plan, guys. I'm going to put a 4mm uh, reamed hole through it. I'm just starting off here. I've got a 3.7, 3.8 drill. I've already put a 3mm through. Just going to put a 3.8 through it. There we are, that's out the other side. So that's a 3.8 drill. That's a 4mm reamer. So that's about 160, 157, so something like that. So, uh, yeah, 4 mil it is. Okay, so uh, actually, I won't have enough travel to get through there. Let's just wind the chuck back a bit. That should do me. Just put that to the start point. Okay, WD 40. And just walk the reamer through there. I'm doing 600 RPM. It's probably a little bit. Yeah, it's only a 4mm reamer. That is slow. It's a machine reamer. I can't feel any appreciable load on the uh, quill of the tailstock. So that reamer is, there we go, that reamer is right through. So, uh, let's just have that over there. Okay, let's get the muck off the reamer before I put it away. And there we are, that is a 4mm reamed hole right through. Um, now then. Do I want to put some sort of trumpet on here? No, I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. I'm going to leave it alone. I was uh, thinking steps ahead about what I'm going to be doing on the inside of here. This is not the time to do it. Uh, there are other steps I need to do first. So don't get ahead of yourself, eh? So I was still set up on centre this way from uh, doing the hole. So I just put the block back in. I actually need to put an end stop on this. However, um, right, I've got my locations. My, I'm going to have a choke butterfly and a throttle butterfly. Between the two is going to be an M3 tapped hole, which is a retaining screw that's going to keep the spiddles in a bit later on. So that's a forward plan. I haven't got a join for this. I'm making it up as I go along, but it's all in my head. I've just said to drill this. So the main jet, which is going to come up from the bottom, is in line with the butterfly, it'll all become clear. The butterfly is basically a shaft down in this hole with a hole drilled 90 degrees to it. So as you rotate it, it shuts off, a bit like a ball valve. Um, and in the bottom of that shaft, which is gonna go just beyond the center line of the, of the throat, in the bottom of it is a hole. And a main jet comes up through that hole and the main jet OD is going to be 332. So uh, I'm basically going to drill right down through this block now with a pre-reaming drill for a 332 reamer. Right down through and out the bottom. And this is a number 44 drill. And this drill, at a point from this shoulder here, is 15 mil. And I've run out of travel of light. No, I haven't. I'm running out of something. Oh no. This wolf in there, that's all. Okay, that's out the bottom. 
So out with that drill, put that back in my number drill set. Uh, make sure it's clean. Okay, back in the set. And I have a 332 reamer here. Okay. So it comes down the touch. What am I running at? Uh, too fast, I think. Let's go for. Why not? 1000 RPM. Doesn't look very fast because I'm quite a small reamer. Like is the pressure I've beaten this through on. Keep it looped up. That's true. Okay, so um, that's a 332 reamed hole through where the throttle butterfly is going to go. So the next hole along now, that's a datum. I've set that datum as zero. Okay, let's put that reamer away. That's a reamer I had left over from the Stuart Models engine. So handy having these small reamers left over from previous projects. I suppose every project it builds your amount of stock of tooling. Um, right, I'm, do I stay on the centre and complete everything here? Or do I move across and do the start features on the other two holes? I think I need to... S no, I'm going to move along. That's not a problem. Not a problem. So, centre drill back in. Little small centre drill. There we go. So the next hole, that was at zero. Uh, the next hole is five and a half mil back. That's the center between the two butterflies. There we go, 5.5. That should line up on that line. Yes, it does, that's a good sign. Let's speed that up a bit. Bit of set drill. Okay. What's so that done? Uh, right, so M3 is going to go in here. So 2.5 drill. Where is it? Where is it? Actually, there's one. Double check, yes, 2.5. So, um,. How deep do I go? I don't want to go through into the throttle body. So let's just idiot check myself. I want to go no more than six mil deep from a touch with this drill. So I know my rule is one mil. Put him on top. Touch on there. My depth in total will be seven from there. Okay. So let's drill this seven mil deep. So there's going to be a little retaining clamp strap type thing in here. Hold it on with a 3mm bolt, which is going to retain the two shafts. Um, a little retaining clamp collar, bush, bracket, something. I haven't designed it yet. I haven't thought that far ahead. That's what's going in that hole between the two spindles. Okay, so um, I think I'll get the taps out, hand tap it at this point, and then we'll move on to the third hole. I'll just put the first tap in there, or take a tap. Just going to put a plug tap in there. A little mill, I guess you get a good feel with a spindle. Um, you know, I can, I can feel the resistance. Yeah. Nice, gentle feel with the quill as well on the on the uh, on the quill handle on the side, so that you can. You can, I can feel it just resisting, just pulling away or just pulling down. So there we are, M3 tapped hole, that's that done, that's that detail finito. So put taps away 
and put that drill away, 2.5 that was, and let's think about the third hole. I was looking for a 6mm slot cutter for this, but I didn't have one. Um, I haven't got one. Okay, I've got lots of quarters and all sorts of odd sizes, not a 6mm. This one looks like a special, it's a long series, it's 5.5mm. That'll do for now, um, to flat bottom it, and then I'll put a 6mm end mill in um, afterwards just to get that bottom of that pocket. So I'm aiming for 12.5 deep, um, so set on the rule, set a zero on the quill, basically use this like a drill. I've already opened it out to 5. So there'll be a taper in the bottom. That's going down through the ball that I reamed. So I'm looking for 13 and a half because I've already done a mill for the roll. There, 13 and a half. Okay, so it's going to be a little. Um, insert in here obviously that was going to be the butterfly um, so that's five and a half so exactly the same trick now make sure we haven't got a burr on the top that's a six mil cutter the shaft that goes in here will be made to fit the whole size so I'm not worried about it being critically six mil um, so again touch on the rule uh, I may have to bring the quill down a little bit give myself enough to enough travel okay touch on there 13 and a half from there Let's slow it down touch and that'll be a hole put through with the six mil cutter down 12 and a half deep We're actually going to be 13 and a half on my DRO allowing for the rule and the slot cutter made sure that the in a part that this cutter is not going to cut is already to depth and flat. So I know I got a milling cutter in a chuck, but I'm not side loading it, I'm using it like a drill. Just clear that, that's 13. Okay, now the throttle one's going to be smaller, the throttle one can be 5mm. We are 13.5. Right, that's that hole done. So I think we will have a champer on the top of it, so a little for a bit that will do that is too slow <laughs> that'll do me happy days that's the pocket that's going to take the butterfly that's going to be a choke the little screw in the middle is going to be a little clamp that'll hold that insert down it'll have a shoulder on it it'll be the depth of the hole and it'll have a uh, two flats on it so that when it's rotated 90 degrees air can pass it when it's flat it will block off the airflow so that's that's how I'm going to do the choke that's going to be quite a simple little thing to do right next piece uh, back to hole number one I believe so my datum there is zero let's go back to zero which is oh just missed there we are okay Seems to have moved away from zero here, only by point, point one. Okay, so we're back to where we started. Um, you know what? This has got to be a five mil hole. Um, and again, it's got to go not as deep. 
I'll have to calculate the depth that this has got to go because I want it to go like a millimetre below what the final bore is going to be. Final bore is going to be uh, 3 sixteenths. So I'll have to calculate the depth of this space that I want this pocket. It's going to be very similar to this one. So slight change of mind, planning on the run. I'm going to make this pocket the same size, it's going to be 6 mil and it's going to be 12 and a half mil deep. I was going to make a 5 mil shaft but I would have to drill a 200 thou hole sideways through a 5 mil shaft and the wall thickness on the edges would have been a little bit on the thin side. So by upping it to 6 I gained a half mil wall thickness either side basically. So 6 mil cutter again and at the same depth uh, I want it to go beyond the, the throat. I want to have a bit of bar left on the end that's round with, a, uh, again, wall thickness. So that's 12 deep. Thirteen point five is my magic number. Let's just do that clean. Creeping up on that. That's it. Okay. Uh, and I think final little job. Little milling. A uh, little shampering bit. Just a little shampoo on that. And there are the holes in the top now. Gotta think to myself, is there anything else I need to do on the top here? No, there isn't. There's nothing left to do on the top. Okay, so, uh, uh, do I put an end stop up so I can flip it over and do some work on the bottom? That's my next question to myself. Put a stop there so I can flip it 180 and do whatever needs doing on the bottom. Nothing under these two holes, but under this one there is, because the main jet's got to come up from the bottom. And we've got to have the fuel inlet and the taper has got to be there somewhere as well. There's going to be a little threaded hole in the bottom for the jet to go into. Uh, yes, I'm going to put a stop on the, this end here to give me a reference. And that will enable me to turn it over and still pick up where I am now, that hole. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm set back up upside down and I've just drilled a 4.2 hole in there, 8.5 mil deep. That leaves about 3 mil of land before it reaches the pocket from the other side. So my main jet is going to have an M5 thread on it with the narrow needle nose on the end with a very small hole through the middle and then a backing hole and it's going to screw in there it'll have a cross cut hole in it and it'll screw in and it's going to have an M5 thread to screw it in to hold it in place and it's going to pass up through the barrel shaped or ball valve up through a hole in the bottom of that up into the airstream so we'll work out the length of what the protrusions going to be at a later point but that said we are now at a point where we need to tap this hole so tap it M5 to the bottom, we'll probably put a plug tap in as well, and then um, that'll be that hole from the bottom done. Now when I screw the main jet in, there's also going to be a plug in here, obviously to stop the fuel coming out the bottom of the carb. So there'll be a little M5 plug that goes in here with an O-ring under it, only, you know, 3 or 4 mil long, uh, with an O-ring under the head or a fibre washer, something like that, that'll screw in to be able to shut off, basically close off the main jet so that no fuel can come out. Then of course we're going to have the fuel inlet from one side here, dead in line with it again, somewhere in that gap. And then my needle will come from the other side, I can't work out which side it is. My needle will screw in from the other side then, so fuel in, and then there'll be a bore in the fuel inlet pipe. And then the needle valve will come in and I can screw the needle in to narrow out what the bore of the fuel inlet is. So that's the way I'm going to 
adjust the fuel f flow or jet. The jet will be 31 thou and I'll have the ability to shut it down using a cross needle into the fuel inlet pipe. I have got a small piece of fuel inlet pipe. Where is it? Uh, I think it's got about a two and a half mil bore, something like that. Yeah, got a piece of pipe here. Um, you know, very small bore, maybe two mil. Oh, can't see it. Get it in the picture. It won't focus. Anyway, I have got a small piece of fuel pipe. So obviously the fuel will come in the side um, between the blanking plug and the bottom of the main jet fuel will come in then a screw from the other side which again will have a seal on it will have a needle on it and as you screw that screw in the needle will enter the inlet pipe um, which I don't know whether I'll screw it in loctite it in probably loctite it in um, but that's how that's going to work so uh, there's no float bowl as such uh, um, it's going to be gravity fed from the fuel tank to a point uh, you know some it'll be somewhere below the uh, the height, uh, the, the full level of the fuel tank will be somewhere below, you know, a few mil, maybe you know, four or five mil below the height of the top of the main jet, um, so that the gravity doesn't, uh, it doesn't just flow all out and flood it. So it'll be below when the tank is full. So that's that's the plan. So I've just tapped uh, M5, started it off with a uh, taper tap, then a plug tap, and it's tapped. Just going to put a little, little chamfer on there, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so um, there's going to be a blanking plug in here, a short threaded M5 with an O-ring or a fibre washer underneath to blank off this hole. The jet is going to screw down in that M5 with its pilot going up into the bore or throat of the carburetor and obviously a fine hole down through the middle, 31 thou, something like that. I'll have to use a number drill for that. Um, and then obviously the, the jet, probably made of brass. I'll have a screwdriver slot in the back of it um, so that I can screw the jet down in. And then obviously the blanking plug and a gap between the two. So that gap will be where the fuel comes in. And in that gap will be where the two pipes, well, the fuel pipe comes in and the needle, the tapered needle from the opposite side. So it's all coming along. Um, little steps, you know, we're getting there. So uh, need the holes now, both sides basically put in. So I think the where the needle comes in, um, I'll work out which side I want to do that. It's probably going to be spark plug side of the carb is going to be the adjusting needle so that the fuel pipe comes out on the outside of the of the model engine as it were or on the correct side where the fuel tank is going to be make a more direct line for the uh, fuel line so I'll flip it over have a think about which way round it's going to go and the next step is going to be the holes based on the stop pin again in the same plane or the same distance in um, so yeah that's next guys okay. So I've worked out the distance, obviously I'm in a different plane now, I've got it laid over 90 degrees so I need to pick up a zero again. So my hole, I'm against my stop pin so I've got the same data in X, wobble pin here, wait for the kick and I want 5.5 millimeters up from the base, there's the kick. Okay so Y zero. Let's just change to inches. Uh, do I want inches? Yes. I'm going to go 50 thou. Which is half of the wobble pin. There. Uh, y0 again. Right, change back to millimetres. Okay, so five and a half mil. 5.4, 5.5. Okay, there we go. Let's just stop that. Right, we'll take that collar back out, put the chuck back in. Um, and we're going to drill a hole here. And I think our main jet. Now, I'm just going to check that I've got an M3 die, but I think our main jet is going to be an M3. Um, so, but. The hole going right through 
I'll probably put a reamer through right through the block sticking out the other side so let's just lock that collet now I don't tighten the collar up when I'm putting the wobble pin on. I just do it hand tight. As you can see, I undid it by hand. Um, can you see? Yes, you can. So, uh, yeah, I need to bop the head up a little bit now. So, uh, centre drill. So, what have I done with it? I've put it away. A little tiny centre drill again. Probably leave the head where it is to do that. Yes, can. Okay, how's that look? Very good. Spot the speed up. A little bit of WD on it. What's going on here? Yeah, I need to drop the head down a little bit. Okay. My quill was down. Give us a little bit more speed. That is max speed. Okay, so I'm going to do M3 to the centre of the block. Um, now I should break through into the hole I drilled, the M5 hole in the bottom. So basically the M3 is going to come through into that M5. So with that said, I do need to go right through. And that's going to be uh, for at the size... I need to pick up on the other side, but it's going to be at a size that I can pick up on later. So do I put a 332 reamer through again and pick up on that? Um, yeah, perhaps, because I need to do a press fit for my fuel inlet. But I want them to be in line, so my jet's going to screw into here. Jet, no, my taper needle's going to screw in this side. Uh, with a spring behind it and a head so that I can adjust the, the throat of the inlet pipe. Um, the inlet pipe on the other side where the fuel comes in from the uh, from the fuel tank. And it's got the needle is going to go down inside that. So I do want it sort of in the same plane. So I think what I'll do is put a 332 reamed hole through. Let's just quick have a look. My old Zeus book. Uh, well, newer Zeus book. Which one's this one? It's a 2012 one. Yeah. Uh, so 332 is about 2.35 to 2.4. So if I stick a 2.2 mil drill right down through. So I'll grab one of those straight to my drill index. There's the drill. 2.2 right through. Now, am I going to miss the parallel underneath? Let's have a quick look. I can't see from that end. I'm going to have to get my head in shot. I don't think I'm going to miss that parallel. Just going to slide that parallel out. I didn't bang it down. So, um, 2.2 right through and then ream it 332. I will break through into the bore. Oh, ooh. Just add a bit of my acid brush. Here we go. I'm down through into that M5 thread now, so that will need recapping at some point. Through the other side. Let's go right through the block. Okay, out the other side. Right, so uh, 332 reamer, I'll have to dig that back out. Uh, and we'll ream that hole, and then we'll come back with the tapping drill for the M3. So 332 reamer. Oh. 
right through the block. Okay, so we're only talking small amounts here. Uh, 2.5 is the tapping drill for the M3. I don't think this might not even cut. No, it doesn't. Yeah, okay. Not a problem. That means I can tap this side M3 and we're all in the right plane. So uh, I need to work out, I'll have to quick measure how wide the block is and then uh, make sure I set my tapping depth correct so I don't break into the other side. So uh, 332 Rima back in its packet. And the 2.5 back in the drill index. That's the best way not to lose stuff. So I've just run an M3 tap down in there. From the touch of the tap, I went down in 9 mil. Um, that's a mil beyond the center line of the block, but bearing in mind there's an M5 tapped hole in the bottom. Um, so there's plenty of thread and it did sort of stop cutting. So uh, maybe a little tiny chamfer on that hole. Let's see, have I got a tiny chamfer and bit? What have I done with it? Will that do it? Maybe do it by hand. That does. <laughs> when you're talking that small, you can probably do it with your fingers. So, um, now we need to flip it 180 in this direction. Pick up on this side, same distance again, and work on the other side, which is the entry for the fuel pipe. Uh, basically, a little, it's going to be a little brass stem with a hole through the middle, which is where... Um, the fuel's going to come into the bottom of the carburetor. So that can come out. We'll flip it. Oh, I'm uh, going to have to put the parallel back in. Probably take the other one out. So uh, you know, there's a little reamed hole come out the back. Um, decide on a size for the fuel pipe spigot that's going to press into there. All sorts of uh, fun and games going on as we work our way through this. So I've got no drawing. No drawing at all. I've made sketches as to what I've done. Um, let's keep that one that side. Put the existing parallel back in. Okay. So I've just done that side there. Uh, that's okay, no burrs. The swarf lurking about in all the passageways that we're creating. Push against the stop. Nip the vice up. Pick up on this edge with a wobbler. Move back in the correct distance. 5.5 uh, mil. Yeah, so pick up with a wobbler. Move back in. Pick up this hole. And then decide on a size that we're going to do for the inlet pipe. Uh, where the fuel is going to enter the carb. So basically, I need a little fitting that's going to press in there that that pipe will fit on. Um, made of brass, probably sticking out your 6mm, maybe a little flange on it that'll press in there with a bit of Loctite. Have a hole through the middle of it that the needle's going to enter from the other side. So, yeah, we're getting there. Little steps. Um, I don't know whether you can see my plan, but I will show when I start making the bits that screw and fit into this block, it'll be more obvious. There's big chunks of this block going to be removed, um, but while it's square and in this state, it gives me all the nice datums I can work to to put all the, all the passageways and holes and what have you all in the correct plane. So that's why I'm starting with this big block. We're going to machine away or everything that's not needed. Um, you know, it's quite a heavy thing might make some sort of clamp that fits on the outer side of this uh, inlet where the air comes in uh, some sort of clamp that goes around the outside of that for holding it solid onto the base that's further steps on we haven't got that far let's make this bit and then see what the other bit needs to look like so i've made a decision four mil reamed for the inlet pipe hole okay 3.8 drill just through into the M5 thread. I could be able to feel this. Here we are. That's the 3.8. 
Out with that, in with a 4mm reamer. Oh. Maybe a little fast. 4mm reamer, that's now running. I can't see up the hole. Oop. Just touch the other side of the hole, not to worry. There's plenty of M3 in the other side. Um, so I will probably have to go around re-tapping some of the holes that I've tapped where I've cross-drilled them um, and then putting the reamer back down because I can't get into those guts into the inside where I've got reamed holes intersecting tapped holes. But So you put the tap in back out, put the reamer in, put the tap in, put the reamer in. Eventually they sort of cleans up all the little burrs and what have you that are inside. And I will put the whole thing, when I'm done, before I do any assembly, in my little ultrasonic cleaner uh, to get any muck out of it. Now I'll blow it out with brake cleaner and carburetor cleaner and what have you, just to make sure there's no muck in there when we get to that point. So, with that said, um, four mil reamed hole there. Probably just get away with brake edge with a by hand again. You know, I can put a little bit more in there. Let's do it. Oh, that's not fast enough. That's about it. Nope, oh, bring your head down the That's better. Little champer on there. So I think. Am I right or am I wrong? I think. Other than the turning work on this side, I think. That is the body of the carb done. Nothing else to do this side. Okay, no, there isn't. Let's take it out. So, two throats on the top, uh, down in, which is where the choke uh, shaft, we'll call it. That'll come to light. You'll see what I'm planning with that when I make it. The throttle butterfly is going to go down in here. It's not a butterfly. It's more of a ball valve. It goes down in here. Uh, lit little M3 thread between the two where there's going to be a little clamp so these the inserts will have a shoulder on them and the M3 will be holding a little clamp plate to keep them down in um, haven't done the throat of the carb yet other than in purely as a uh, what was it 316th reamed hole no I think it was an M4 reamed hole um, so um, M4 reamed here which is where the fuel inlet's going to come in and M3 this side which is where my needle's going to screw in which restricts the fuel inlet which goes in this side which is my fuel metering and then obviously my main jet will go up through the hole in the bottom which sticks up into the throat uh, main jet will have um, that M4 with it, M5 thread on it with the narrow protrusion which fits up in the smaller hole we reamed earlier 332 was it i think so um no yeah it might be i'll have to look back at the tape so yeah i mean that that's the basis of the carb so i think the next thing i need to do is put it back in the um in the lathe and face this back to leave the protrusion here which is going to stick into the valve chamber so that's the next job once i've done that uh, I then what's after that okay then reduce any unneeded material and metal on this body because um, there's going to be quite a bit there that's not needed not doing anything we'll you know chamber it pretty it up remove anything that's not needed and pretty the thing up that's pretty much the next steps so as I've said many times before I think that's about it for this one so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for subscribing we're nearly on 13,000, uh, 12,997 last time I looked before I came down the shed today. Hopefully by the end of the day we might get to that magic 13,000. It's not really a milestone figure, but every thousand helps and it's all because of you guys following along. So thank you so much. Anyway, as I said, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.